When he goes into how the minister conducted herself as a witness and answered vital questions on social grounds, he says she was, to put it mildly, less than satisfactory, that she would unjustifiably answer repeatedly or I don't know or I don't remember. She simply would not answer some of those key questions and she gave very long answers to the questions asked. He also cites a specific example where he had to check with the translator that the translator had in fact correctly translated translated the question from English into Isizulu because he was baffled as to why the minister was incapable or unwilling to answer such a simple question during the inquiry. And so that translation from English into Isizulu repeated several times and the minister simply did not answer what he deemed a simple and vital question in the inquiry. So what's the conclusion from all of this, Erin? I mean, just from that report, what, uh, uh, what does, does it answer the question as to you know uh, whether she should be held personally personally liable for the legal cost does it actually take us uh, to that uh, end point it takes us to the step of that point in a way. Nguepe's urge, or he sort of uh, de desisted, you could say, from answering specifically should she pay or not. And he says that's not within his ambit as the referee in this inquiry. He was tasked by the Constitutional Court with gathering evidence over these controversial work streams, which were set up to deal with the crisis at Sasa and try and bring social grant payments in house and answer a series of questions. And he does so in the report. So he answers, did the minister set up the work streams? Yes, she did. Did they answer directly to her, which flouted government protocol? They were meant to answer to the CEO of SASA. Yes, they did. Then he gives a date on when those work streams were appointed in 2016. And finally, he answers the crucial question, why did the minister not disclose to the constitutional court that she had been involved with the work streams, that these work streams in fact existed, and that they answered directly to her? And he says in a roundabout way, and I'm going to paraphrase here because it's very shrewd legal language he uses at the end of this report, but he really says she doesn't answer those questions and disclose that to the Constitutional Court because it implicates her in this question of costs. Should she personally pay to the Constitutional Court and pay the legal fees of her opponents over the Sasa debacle? And in a roundabout way, he gets us to the step of that answer, which I think the Constitutional Court will be inclined to say is yes, but we will have to see what the bench decides. All right.